In today's video lesson, we're going to learn about Hess's Law. We'll learn that if you can find intermediate routes to find to go from reactants to products, you can add the delta H's from those intermediate routes to figure out the delta H of the reaction. So it would be worthwhile to recap the first law of thermodynamics, which states that in chemical transformations, energy can be neither created nor destroyed. So in other words, energy is conserved through chemical reactions. And Hess's law is an application of this principle. Hess's law states that the heat of a reaction can be determined algebraically by adding the delta H values for related reactions. When added, these reference reactions must give the desired or target reaction. And when determining the delta H of the overall reaction, it may be necessary to reverse and or adjust the molar ratios by multiplying by a factor. So we can look at this one reaction. We want to figure out what this delta H is in root one. So going directly from these reactants to these products. If we don't know this, but we do know the delta H to make an intermediate, and then that intermediate, we know the delta H to make the desired product, so root two. We could add these two reactions to find out this delta H. And we'll go through some examples and highlight some rules that we need to follow to determine this. So one rule to follow is that if a reaction must be reversed, the sign of the delta H for that reaction must be altered as well. When you're adjusting molar ratios by multiplying, all the coefficients in the equation must be multiplied by the same factor, as must the delta H value for that reaction. So for instance, you need to double the amount of hydrogen. You have to double everything in the reaction plus double the delta H value. So here's our example. Uh, imagine that we have solid carbon reacting with water vapor to form carbon monoxide gas and hydrogen gas in this following reaction. So here's our reaction and it's balanced. Um, we can use the following reference equations to calculate the delta H value for this reaction. So we don't know the delta H value for this, but we do know the delta H values for these three reactions. So if we take a look, some of this individual portions are here, but there are elements that aren't part of the target reaction. So these oxygens, for instance, um, they need to go. Um, we also see there's some carbon dioxide that doesn't belong. So we need to find a way to cross out or cancel out some of these intermediates that we don't want to record. So now we need to plan our action. So the first thing is the first reaction, we have carbon as a reactant and we have some other parts that we don't need, but we can get rid of those with some of our other actions. So we're gonna keep this as is. The next one, we have carbon monoxide as reactant, but we want it as a product. So we're gonna flip it or reverse it. And when we do that, we have to flip the delta H. And then the next one, we have hydrogen gas as a reactant. Again, we want it as a product. So we're gonna flip this reaction too. So we'll rewrite these and then cross off the things that don't belong and see if we can solve for our target delta H. So let's rewrite these. So the first one we can keep the same. So we have C solid plus O2 gaseous makes CO2 gaseous. And we keep our delta H the same. Delta H equals negative 393 kilojoules per mole of carbon. The next one we decided we were gonna flip. So now it's gonna be CO2 in the gaseous state produces carbon monoxide, also gaseous, plus one half O2, which is gaseous. And our delta H now is going to be positive 283 kilojoules per mole of CO. And then our third one we wanted to flip to, so we're gonna have H2O gaseous water vapor plus one half, oops, 
produces one half O2 gases plus H2 gases. And we have to change our delta H again to be positive, so it's positive 242 kilojoules per mole of H2. And we're going to total that all up and see, cross off the things that are duplicated. So we have one oxygen here, but we too have two halves on the product side, so those can cancel out. So whatever you have on the reactant side that's the same on the product side, you can remove. We have a carbon dioxide here and over here, so we can cross those out. And now we can rewrite our equation. So we have carbon solid plus H2O gaseous makes carbon monoxide gaseous plus H2 gaseous. And then our delta H is equal to add them all together and you get a positive 132 kilojoules per mole of carbon monoxide. And that's how you solve.